What's up, YouTube? Today, we're going to be putting on a vinyl decal on my tailgate. And this has come from someone who fucking hates vinyl decals. Hey, boys and girls. So today, I've got this nice, cheap vinyl sticker to put on my tailgate. So Jeep Comanches came with these raised letters on the tailgate here, and I think most of them came with stickers on them from the factory. I'm doing this video today because there's already videos out there showing how to put vinyl on cars, but those dudes are always working with like a brand new car with perfect paint, perfect sheet metal. I don't like doing shit the easy way. We're going to do shit the hard way. What about if you have an old ass tailgate or piece of sheet metal that's not straight, that's got scratches and rust? How do you put one of these on without making it looking like total ass? I'll show you those tricks today. And the things I've learned from vinyl and why I hate vinyl is because it's a pain in the ass. This shit's super fucking sticky. You peel this goddamn transfer paper off. It sticks to itself. You accidentally have one of these fold on itself. It's a fucking mess. You put it on. There's goddamn bubbles and shit everywhere. You fucked up. It's all expensive. Do it again. It sucks. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not bitter or anything. But vinyl is definitely not one of my favorite things to do. So what we're going to do today, first thing, I'm going to clean this up. It's a pretty dirty tailgate. Soap, water, whatever, a little degreaser. Then we're going to take this tailgate off and I'm going to take it over to the workbench and we'll really see what we're in for. But most likely I'm going to have to sand all this down with an orbital sander. Not to bare metal, of course, but something that will take out all the little imperfections in here. Um, so we'll do that. And hopefully it doesn't look fucking awful after I'm done. So let's check it out. Okay, tailgate off. You can see one of the big problems here. These scratches go right through the paint primer. You can see there's already some rust. So, in addition to that, there is some residue from where there was a decal on here before. You can see it right on the edges of it. So this tailgate was actually repainted, and it actually looks like the paint they used wasn't too bad a quality, but the prep was just fucking non-existent. I mean, you can see little bits of dust and dirt that wasn't picked up that just got painted over there was a decal over here where they just painted over the actual glue lazy fucks if I put my shit box decal on there to cover up that mess so yeah we got a little work cut out for us in addition to this tail is not flat either so yeah, vinyl's not too bad when you're doing it on a nice, flat, clean, fresh piece of sheet metal that doesn't have any damage or anything, any gunk on it under the paint or whatever. Uh, so in this case, we're going to have to do a little extra prep work to make this look nice. Um, to start, we'll sand all this down flat. Get all these little bumps and stuff sanded down because when you put vinyl on, any little imperfection is never going to show. All these little bumps and shit, any divots, all that's going to show. And if you don't give a fuck, you just want to put it on there, hey, go for it, whatever. Granted, this isn't the nicest tailgate in the world, but I do take pride in my work, and I didn't want to just rush through it and make it look like ass. My truck is kind of already multicolored and looks like ass enough, so try to do one thing like nice, add a little bling, make it pop a little bit. One of the issues that many people have with vinyl and its application is with the vinyl itself. There's lots of manufacturers of vinyl out there, and most of them fucking suck. You have vinyl that is really thin, too stretchy, the adhesive is too tacky, not tacky enough, 
issues with even taking getting the vinyl off of the backing paper. So with this particular decal, I got this from a place called Graphics Express, and they're supposed to be a OEM authentic restoration product manufacturer. Look at that cool Mopar hologram on there. Whoa. This isn't, I mean, I could have probably gone anywhere and got this. I mean, I know there's guys on the internet who sell ones that they make themselves. I could have probably made one myself. Um, I have experience with vinyl and using a, uh, a Cricut or a Silhouette and, you know, just a paper cutting machine, not really a plotter so much. So I've made lots of vinyl stickers over the years. And so I, I kind of figured out what works, what doesn't. And you definitely do get what you pay for. So if you get like a $10 sticker versus a... I think this one came out to about 40 fucking bucks. The difference is going to be in the vinyl itself. You know, you do get what you pay for in this in this case. And if you're going to be using vinyl, a good way to check if it's decent quality is look on the back. See what type of vinyl it is. This stuff makes 3M. 3M makes excellent vinyl. Another excellent vinyl brand is Oracle. Now you want to get the Oracle 651, which is what they call their permanent vinyl. This is also, this 3M is also considered permanent vinyl. And it's not, it doesn't mean permanent in the sense it's going to last forever. It's not. I mean, I think the adhesive only has about like a five-year shelf life under the elements. But permanent means that you want it to stay on there. You're not trying to take it off. It's not a reusable decal. So don't make that mistake because you can get uh, reusable, non-permanent decals. And they're just not, they're not made to be on cars unless it's something you just want on there temporarily. Another component of vinyl that can be a pain in the ass is the actual transfer paper. So vinyl generally comes in two pieces, right? You've got the backing, well, three pieces of the backing, the vinyl itself, and then this transfer paper. Sometimes it's called contact paper. There's a couple different names for it, uh, contact tape paper, whatever. Here's another area where quality can be skimped and you pay the price. Um, I've had many issues with shitty contact transfer paper where you'll take it off and sometimes it's just so fucking sticky it'll pull the sticker off but then you can't get the damn transfer paper off the vinyl so it's completely fucking useless it won't come off without basically destroying the thing or you have ones that aren't sticky enough you pull it off and it's not actually taking the vinyl off you know it's just kind of useless more like a static clean so just keep that in mind there's vinyl comes in many shapes sizes colors backing, transfer tape, stick with the good name brands. If you can stick with, I'd say, anything made by Oracle, 3M, and I know Silhouette is starting to make or has been making some stuff that seems to be good quality, but don't cheap out if you want this stuff to look good and if you want it to last. Again, you get what you pay for. So my original plan was to take an orbital sander with maybe some like ultra, ultra fine grit backing and just try to level this all down but my worry is that if you look at the edges of where the old sticker was you'll see it doesn't always go right to the edge of the actual raised sheet metal so my concern with that is that if I was going to take a an orbital sander I might take so much off past the edge of the vinyl and it would have this like really stupid feather primer whatever bullshit look to it so instead I'm just gonna been, I've been using this simple wood chisel and just knocking down all the high spots and then after that I'm gonna take some fine grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna do it by hand and just be very very careful to not go past some of these edges and when we go to apply the vinyl hopefully I can get most of that crap covered up So I'm being really, really careful here to not go too far past the edges here. 
where that cutoff for that vinyl residue is. Ideally, I'm going to be able to just kind of use that as a as a stencil to apply that new vinyl. But just watching the edges there and taking down the high spots, just so it's a little less I'll have to do when I'm sanding this, because again, I'm going to be doing this all by hand. It really sucks when you fix someone else's shitty work. I've chiseled down all the high spots, as you can see, a lot around the edges, but any of the little bumps and dirt and dust that was trapped under the paint, I tried to get as much of that as possible too. This one here, quite a few spots. And I also put this tailgate in the press and got it to straighten out a little better. So it is a bit flatter now. I won't tell you I did a great job. There is a little bit of a crease, but whatever. All right, I got some 1200 grit sandpaper here that I've cut up. If that doesn't work at getting everything kind of feathered out, then I will, I will use a heavier grit from there. But I want to start here so I'm not taking off too much paint. So I'm definitely knocking these high spots down. But right here where it's all rusty and shitty, yeah, I think I'm going to have to come back in with just a little bit of Bondo body filler and just to get it to be flat. Because I know if I put vinyl on it like this, it's just going to divot and look shitty. Know, it'll probably look shitty anyways, but at least it'll look a little less shitty. Alright, I got all the high spots knocked down as you can see here. And it came out pretty good actually. All those little dust, dirt, little bits popping out of that paint. Got it all sanded down. So now I'm going to come back and fill in these little 
divots here from rust. Looks like something probably got scratched along here. Scratched it right down, went through the paint, primer down to bare metal, and now it's just rust. So we're going to clean that up, wire brush, uh, some acetone, and use a little bit of body filler to get all that done. Alright, here are the tools of the trade today. We'll be using this Bondo glazing spot putty, along with a little spreader, squeegee guy. Small wire brush to knock off some of that rust. Got some cleaner degreaser here, and acetone. So first thing I'm going to do is take that wire brush, get into this rust here, get it all cleaned up down to bare metal. Um, wipe it all down with acetone. I'm going to go ahead and do it to all the letters because there are a couple low spots on all of them. Not much, but I got the glazing spot put putty stuff because I don't know, the regular two-part Bondo would just seem overkill for, for what I'm doing here. I only need to fill in a small couple spots where it's probably like maybe like a sixteenth of an inch, if that, under the paint. So let's give it a shot. Okay, Bondo is on and drying. I covered in some of those low spots I found, whether that was from that scratch. And in this case, just had a couple little small dents that I wanted to fill in. So this way, when I put the vinyl on, it'll look nice and flat. Shouldn't have any protrusions, no pimples, no dimples. Hopefully it'll look nice and clean. So I'm going to let this sit and dry for about an hour, and uh, we'll come back and go on to the next step. All right, it's been about an hour. I'd say it's about 99% dry via the Bondo. There are a couple spots, and you can actually kind of see that the color is a little different, where there was that pitting from the rust area. So I'm going to let this one sit for just a little longer. So I'm going to start sanding this down. I'm going to start with maybe some four or 500 grit and uh, work my way up to 1,000 again. And yeah, let's sand our life away some more.
All right, that's it. Sanded down with the 500 grit. And now I'm going to step it up to the 1000 grit. Alright, Bondo is pretty much dry on most of these. I did double up a little bit and put a couple layers on here because it had a little bit of crease from when I straightened this out. So, kind of want to do that to kind of flatten it out just a little bit. But all the other letters are good to go now. I'm going to start on this side on the P. So, the first thing I'm going to do is wipe this down with acetone just to make sure it's nice and clean. Alright, so before we go to apply the vinyl, I'll make sure we got our all our tools ready here. Uh, first we'll use acetone, got a rag here, and that's just for the initial wipe down. Soap and water here, get yourself a clean rag, a squirt bottle like this, and fill it up with some Dawn dish soap and water. Uh, the ratio is like something from like 1 to 256 parts, so you don't have to use a whole lot in a bottle like this, just a few drops in the bottom will do it. Pair of scissors to cut the vinyl as needed, or not the vinyl, but the, the transfer contact paper. A couple little squeegee scrapers here. This one's a bit more rigid. I like using this one here. This is actually a Bondo one because it is a little more flexible. It's a little more forgiving, especially around contours and curves and stuff. A little X-Acto knife. This is for if we end up with any bubbles, we will just pierce them with the tip and then smooth them out. A heat gun, you can maybe get away with a hair dryer, but be a man, use a heat gun, and of course some gloves. Alright, to start I've already wiped this letter down, the P with acetone. I've already cut out the individual letter as well. Not that this particular decal is meant to go on all as one piece, but if you're putting on vinyl and it's multiple pieces, sometimes it's easier to cut out those smaller pieces and apply them on individually and try to do the whole thing all at once. So one of the methods for applying vinyl is what's called like a hinge method where you line up your decal and you basically tape it down so it's hinging. You can either do it on the top or the bottom. I like to do it right down the middle. Then you'll take your transfer paper off, fold it back, cut the backing paper and then reapply the vinyl. But in this case, I'm kind of going in blind that way, so I'm actually going to just spray this down, the surface area down, spray the back of the decal, and just kind of eyeball it in position, let it drop in place, and then just start squeegeeing it from there. And one thing too, when you're taking it off the transfer paper, before you take it all the way off, you're doing like a traditional method, just pull it off and put it back on so it peels a lot easier. So it doesn't want to stick. Another trick too when you're going down to for this final press, put your transfer paper back on top of it so you don't scratch up the face of the vinyl. I'm going to use a heat gun now just to kind of flatten it all out, get all the little bubbles and everything down. The next one we're going to put on here is the E, and this guy was a challenge, of course. You can see how much filler I put in here just to kind of level out that. Basically, there was like a seam, a fold from when I straightened out this tailgate. So, the first thing I'm going to do is wipe it down with some acetone. You don't have to go nuts with this stuff, right? Because it'll take the paint off if you go nuts. So, just, just 
wipe, wipe down just to get any contaminants off of there. I've got my E cut down here. I'm gonna peel it off of the backing paper here. Just like last time, spray it down with soap and water. Same thing to the back. And then let's see if I can eyeball it into place here. I'm going to try to line up the middle of it first with the E. See was pulling this off this contact paper. You want to be careful not to stretch it all out. Stretch out the vinyl that is. And you still see I'm not squeegeeing it. I'm still leaving lots of water and soap under there so it's not adhering. So I can move it into position once I've got this transfer paper off. and wet. Move around just a little bit here. I'm pretty happy with that right there. Take the backing paper, put it back on there, pull it down, and just squeegee all the water. Use a towel here to kind of blot up all of this. As we're working on a flat surface here. If you were on the side of the car, and you could just let all this water, everything ring down. Blot that water up. A little more squeegee action here. And the heat gun on the low setting to dry all that out. You kind of see a couple of little creases and bubbles and stuff and start to kind of work its way out.
you can see that, I did end up with a little bubble in there. So despite my best efforts, I did end up with a little bubble. So what we're going to do, take a little X-Acto knife, just poke a hole into it. Come back with a squeegee. Smooth it out a little bit. Alright, last one. Now, I remind you <clears throat> when you're pulling this transfer paper off, be very, very careful. You see, I'm using this squeegee to hold down the vinyl. Peeling off that transfer paper. I'm just pulling it out about a quarter of an inch at a time. Just taking my time, being patient. Because if you pull too much, you can actually stretch the vinyl. Because the vinyl does stretch, so keep that in mind. If you end up stretching it out, it'll look dumb. And once you stretch it out, it's really hard to stretch it back in. Alright. Oh, that one went on nice and crooked. That's okay. Tune it up. All right, there it is. All the decals put on. Came out pretty good too. Pretty smooth overall. So I'm gonna let this sit in my shop overnight. My shop is heated because uh, it's probably gonna be high 20s tonight. So I got it about set about 60 degrees in here, 65, and I'm gonna let it sit overnight so that. You know, it doesn't get too cold, it doesn't make the vinyl shrink, it doesn't mess with the adhesive, make sure it has enough time to set up and, and really become permanent. So let's come back to it tomorrow. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. It's been about 12 hours now letting this vinyl set up. And I gotta say, it came out pretty good. I won't say it's perfect, but it's pretty smooth and flat. And there are a couple spots that aren't great so one thing I realized is that I made the wrongful assumption of thinking that this new decal was going to be the exact same dimensions as the old ones I try to get it to line up with the edges of that old decal but you know it was maybe like a 16th to an eighth off in places so I did the best that I could I did miss one little spot of course as you can see there is a little bump right there and you can see it's right on the edge where that old residue was so I think when I was sanding I was thinking that maybe I wouldn't have gone past this line 
but I should have done a little more due diligence. I missed that guy. There's the E. And you can see there's a tiny little pinhole there. That was from where we popped that bubble earlier. Generally, I've seen this stuff smooth out a little more to where you can kind of blend it and it doesn't give you a little hole like that. I think I may have pushed down a little too hard with my X-Acto knife and actually maybe put a little tiny dent hole in the Bondo that's under there. So that's why uh, it's a little more apparent. But whatever. I mean, you get far enough away. You know, I'm about not even 12 inches away right now and you can't hardly see it. This one came out pretty good too. But I should have probably feathered just a little more around these edges to get some of that old glue and residue off. And knowing what I know now, I would have probably put these decals maybe a sixteenth lower just so I could have avoided some of that or putting that vinyl on top of that residue as you can kind of see at certain angles. It's a little more apparent, but whatever. I can live with it. The J came out really good. Um, if you really get down on it in the right angle, you can kind of see where those old rust spots were. Just a little, little bit. But you really got to be looking at it on the at the right angle in the right light. I and mean, when you're, you know, at least a foot away, I think it looks really good. I think it really made this thing pop, which is what I wanted to do. There is still a little bit of Bondo residue in some of these corners, and I've had really good luck just using a pick here and just scraping it all out carefully, not driving too hard. This the point on this one is not too sharp. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and then give it a little wipe down, put it back on the truck, and should wrap it all up. All right, guys, what do you think? I think it came out pretty damn good. Um, it's just what I was looking for. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks considering I'm using, again, an old shitty tailgate that's been repainted, wasn't prepped well. Now, I'm not planning on running this tailgate for like 30 years now, you know. I just wanted something to look nice for the next few years until I can afford a nice paint job. So, All right, guys. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, all that bullshit, and we'll see you next time.